Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox. As a church, we're studying the Holy Spirit, and this is the first of two uh, recordings on the topic of the Spirit Speaks. We're focused on Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame, and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit, and the result is that he speaks. The Spirit loves to speak about Jesus, but the time to speak is not always of our own choosing. The circumstances can be inconvenient, dangerous, and scary. God allows us, for some reason, to experience frightening situations, perhaps to draw us closer to the Spirit, eh? Does the scariness of a situation put you off speaking? What's the scariest situation you've ever been in regarding sharing your faith? I remember a particular time when I was living in Manchester. A friend of mine called Dwight and I were talking to people about Jesus uh, on the high street uh, in the city centre when a man came over and just started kicking me really hard. We retreated into a shopping centre where the threat of security staff intervening was enough to persuade my attacker to flee. We could not stay in the mall forever. Uh, it took all the courage I had to step outside and once again share my faith. I'm glad I had Dwight with me. But I, but I also had the spirit. I was frightened, but I am glad it happened. My convictions deepened that day. I grasped more fully why I was doing what I was doing. Perhaps Peter and John had a similar experience, although their situation was much more scary than mine. I mean, this chap Caiaphas has previous where Jesus is concerned. In Luke chapter 11, he was the man who started the movement to kill Jesus after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. Have a look in verses 49 to 53. And secondly, uh, Caiaphas was the one who called for the death of Jesus and plotted his arrest. Have a look in Matthew 26, verses 3 and 4. And thirdly, Caiaphas was the one who participated in the trial, the sham, mock, travesty of a trial of Jesus. Matthew 26, verses 57 to 60, for more detail. Peter and John have no reason to think that their fate will be any different to that of Jesus. But their response? They speak. They speak boldly. They speak without hindrance. They speak of Jesus, the cross, and the guilt of their audience in that travesty of justice. The Spirit loves to speak through his servants. Where does this courage come from? How can we get similar courage? Well, we'll deal with that in the next recording. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day and God bless.